Welcome to the Paint with Lovejoy podcast, the place where scared creatives transform into confident painters. Perfect for those that have no experience, are a first-time painter, or beginner painter. This podcast will have relevant materials to help you along your journey. Thanks for joining. In this section of our podcast, I'm considering this an audio blog to where I will be reading, um, giving you a voiceover for the blog posts that I have written. If you have questions, please leave comments, please subscribe to the channel, and let me know your thoughts and topics that you might want me to discuss in the future. This is for those of you that have never painted before or are at the beginning stages of your painting process. I highly encourage you to find a creative outlet in your life on a regular basis, and I'm here to help you get started. Thank you for joining. Eight mistakes beginner acrylic painters make and how to avoid them. As a budding artist, it can be daunting to begin painting, learning the techniques, and finding your own style. But if you allow yourself to be brave and persistent, the results of your labor will be much more rewarding. To help you get started on your journey, here are eight mistakes new painters often make and how to avoid them for improved creative success. From mixing paint to picking out quality supplies, this guide is filled with inspiring tips to keep you confident at every step. You have so much potential. You only need the right skills and mindset. Number one, buying the cheapest paint you can find. When starting to paint, Quality should be a priority. Buying the cheapest paints may seem economical at the moment, but in the long run, it will impact your creative learning. Instead of opting for the cheap paint, make quality student-grade acrylic paint your go-to option. Not only is student-grade acrylic paint budget-friendly, evenly pigmented, and long-lasting, but it will also provide you with the quality starting point for practice and experimentation. My personal recommendation, the brushes and your canvases, you don't have to get top quality. You can actually go a little bit cheaper with your brushes and your canvases, but it is important to make sure that you actually get quality student grade paint. That way you get the most out of your artistic endeavors. The paint brands that I recommend for first time and beginner painters for student grade acrylic paint. I do recommend the Arteza brand. And then my favorite brand and top one that I recommend is the Liquitex Basics. The Liquitex Basics is gonna be the closest consistency to what I use in my in-person workshops, as well as what I use in my tutorial videos on YouTube and my website. Even if you like a different brand than the ones that I've recommended, please just kind of find what works for you. Number two. Relying on pre-mixed paints instead of mixing your own colors. It is better not to use the pre-mixed paints. Instead, you should learn how to mix your own colors. This will help you create a higher quality art and give you more control over the colors and your outcome. Pre-mixed paints are usually cheaper, but they don't always have the exact color that you need or they don't mix well together. So again, I do recommend that you um, learn how to make your own paint, mix, uh, mix your own colors. The more that you mix your colors, the more comfortable you'll get with it. And the more that your brain will actually know, oh, this much white, this much blue, or this much pigment. So it does come with practice getting comfortable with mixing your colors. And the only way to get there is with practice. Mistake number three, applying paint too thin or sometimes applying it too thick. As you first start painting, it can be tricky to know how much paint to put on the canvas. If you use too little paint, your colors will not blend properly and your painting may look unfinished and you may even see the texture of the canvas. On the other hand, if you use too much paint, it will become very difficult to control the colors and to control kind of um, your shapes inside the painting. Each artist has a preferred consistency, and the more that you paint and get comfortable with the process, you will find the consistency that you like. 
So I do recommend that you play with the consistency of your paint. Uh, try it a little too thin, try it a little too thick, and find your spot in the middle that works best for you. It is important to practice applying enough paint, especially in the beginning, so that way it helps your learning curve. My biggest tip that I give to my first time and beginner painters, most of them do not apply their paint thick enough. So I encourage you to apply your paint thick enough so that way you don't see the texture of the canvas and it will make your blending and the coverage so much easier. Mistake number four, holding your breath. When we learn something new, it can make us feel scared or nervous or both. When this happens, some people, most people tend to hold their breath without realizing it. Holding your breath can cause you to tense up and make it more difficult for you to focus on the painting or the task at hand. It is important to be aware of this habit and to take a few deep breaths before starting each painting process. This will help you relax, allowing you to concentrate better on the artwork that lies ahead. Additionally, focusing on breathing throughout your painting session can help wonders for maintaining um, steady brush strokes, for achieving the blending, and for just helping your general process um, when you remember to breathe through this. With practice, you will find yourself kind of in a meditative state and breathing pretty consistently um, and keeping you pretty calm. So the tip that I give all my students, um, if you're not in one of my in-person classes to where I'm there to remind you to breathe, I recommend um, for all my online classes and those of you painting at home, take a post-it note or even a scrap sheet of paper and just write the word, take a deep breath on it. And then I want you to tape that to your computer to monitor or your TV so that every time you look up to look at that tutorial, you see that note and you take a deep breath. This one is actually a big game changer. So I highly recommend that you make a note and um, put it on your computer while you are painting. Mistake number five, comparing your progress to others. It is not helpful to compare your painting progress to anyone else. Learning to paint, learning anything is a journey and it is important for you to embrace where you're at in your process. Focus on your own progress and celebrate your successes along the way. Each time that you paint, you are going to be building on the skills from the prior painting and you're going to keep taking the lessons that you learned from your pri prior painting into your current and future paintings to get more comfortable. And I like to remind all my students, keep in mind that when you went through school or if you're currently going through school, your education doesn't happen overnight. You don't go from first grade to senior in high school um, in one year. It takes a couple of years and each year you learn something more. You learn something new. So keep that in mind as you are comparing yourself to others. Mistake number six, starting with subjects that are too challenging for your skill level. When you first start painting, picking subjects that aren't too hard is a good idea. Pick the simple subjects. Subjects labeled first time or beginner are a great place for you to start to build your foundation and to build your confidence. These compositions will be landscapes, silhouettes, simple flowers, other simple items. And this is more for you to get comfortable with your color mixing, your blending, layering your paint, and the process of painting in general. You need to find a good kind of foundation for this so that way you can build your confidence to get to those challenging paintings. Once this level is comfortable, then again, I want you to push yourself to try harder painting subjects. And harder painting subjects would entail things with more detail or painting your pet or even jumping up to a more challenging teacher. Again, remember you didn't go from elementary school to high school in one year. It took time. And with each year, you learn harder and harder subjects. Mistake number seven, 
having unrealistic expectations, also known as perfectionist expectations. It is not a good idea to expect too much from yourself when you first start out painting. Trying to make it perfect can make it harder for you to focus on learning and actually doing a good job. Instead of going for perfection, try to celebrate each success as you go and remember that it takes time and practice to get better at painting. Focus on your progress, not perfection. And something I tell all my classes is your idea of perfection will change the more that you learn. As you learn more, um, that concept of what per perfect is going to um, be a little more redefined, a little bit, um, a little bit different than what you thought perfect was before. So again, we are focusing on progress, not perfection. And the last mistake that I see a lot of beginner painters make is you rush through the steps of the tutorial or the painting process. When you are painting, it is best to take your time with each step. Rushing through can make it harder to learn and harder to do your best. Taking your time will help you focus on learning and making sure that you get the best results from your painting experience. It's okay if you need to do the same tutorial multiple times. Doing it more than once can help you learn and get better at the painting process. With the right knowledge and tips in hand, there's no reason why any beginner painter can't get their start and find success. Any painting journey should be approached with an open mind, realistic expectations. Otherwise, it will become discouraging very quickly. Keeping your supplies, time, energy, and projects all in close consideration will get you closer to achieving your goals and results that you are that you love and that you are proud of yourself for. As long as you approach your art and your painting process with patience and positivity, these hiccups won't hold you back forever. Thanks so much for checking out this podcast on the Paint with Lovejoy uh, podcast. If you liked this, please subscribe, hit the bell, so that way you have notifications when the next one is released, and please share this with your community. You can find more in-depth uh, courses and information on the Paint with Lovejoy website, paintwithlovejoy.com, or on the Paint with Lovejoy YouTube channel. You are always welcome to reach out and send me an email with any questions, comments, suggestions at paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. I am honored to be able to help you along this process, and I'm grateful that you are joining. So... Have a great day and happy painting. Cheers.